there is an exciting new health services program for children in the poorest villages in your country. You are the health minister and have decided to design a rigorous impact evaluation. You may have limited resources to reach everyone with your program. That can actually help you to evaluate its impact. How so? You've identified 300 equally deserving, very poor villages. But your ministry only has enough money to implement the program in 150 of them. The fairest way is to give an equal chance to each village and randomly select 150 to receive the program. The remaining 150 villages which won't receive the health program will be your comparison group. By measuring, then comparing the health outcomes across both sets of villages, you can rigorously evaluate the impact of your program. Now, let's say your ministry does have enough money to reach all 300 villages. Of course that's great, but what about your comparison group? You still have the opportunity for an impact evaluation if you phase in the program over time. Let's say the program can only reach 150 in the first year. So you randomly select 150 to receive the program in phase one. Because the remaining 150 don't receive it yet, they act as your comparison group. By comparing the two randomly selected groups, you can evaluate the impact of the program. And in phase two, the villages in the comparison group will receive the health program. So when your program can't reach everyone or can't reach everyone at the same time, randomization is a fair, transparent way of selecting who receives it or who receives it first. Plus, it means you've designed a rigorous evaluation to test if your program is really having an impact.